Hi everyone. My name is Otto de Roo. I'm a trainer and auditor at EPI. Today I'm going to give you an overview of the content of the Data Center Foundation Certificate course in order to give you a good impression on what to expect from this training. I hope you will enjoy this preview. DCFC is for anyone who wants to acquire foundation level knowledge on the data center infrastructure. This training is intended for everyone involved in the data center services. In addition to the internal data center staff, this training is also very valuable for the data center end users as well as service providers, vendors, contractors, and anyone else who finds that having basic knowledge of the data center is important. DCFC is a two day training where we will during the first day start off with the history of the data center after the course introduction. Uh, we will address the data center relation to the business, data center standards, site selection, and the various data center facility areas. Of course, explanation of the power infrastructure will be given and the last module of the first day will address lighting in the data center. On the second day, we will start off with an explanation of the data center cooling infrastructure, followed by the ICT and network infrastructure, security, fire safety, and we will con conclude with monitoring and reporting. In order to become certified, you will need to do an exam after this training. The DCFC exam is a closed book exam with 40 multiple choice questions. You will have one hour to complete the exam and the passing mark of the exam is 60%. So you will need 24 correct answers out of those 40 questions. In other words, you can make 60 mistakes and still pass the exam. In the next slides, I will go into the content of the DCFC training. I will show you the highlights of the various modules and I will present some samples of the actual content of this course. During this sneak peek, I will not elaborate on the content of the slides as this will be done uh, during the real training. However, I hope it will provide a good insight into what to expect from the training and this first module will address the history of data centers. In addition to the history of data centers, this module will also address current data center trends and the different types of data centers. Data centers play a fundamental role in our society and digital economy. Everything that happens online is housed in a data center. The data center industry is fast growing. There is a high demand coming from technologies like cloud computing, big data, etc. This growth will not stop in the coming years. With the rollout of the Internet of Things and artificial intelligence, we know that there will be an ever-increasing demand in higher network bandwidth, more computing power and data storage capacity, and this will result in more required data center uh, capacity. The picture on the slide gives you an indication of the expected data center growth and investment for the various regions. Clear descriptions are given in this training for the various types of data centers, eh? where this slide uh, gives you an example of an enterprise data center. Module two is about the data center and its relation to the business. We will point out in this module the importance of information technology and the facilitating infrastructure being the data center. Furthermore, the impact and main causes of unavailability of the IT infrastructure 
and the data center will be shown in this module. This slide points out the ever-increasing importance of information technology for every organization. Information technology becomes more complex and due to its business criticality, the requirements for high availability and efficiency are obvious. For information technology to function, the support of a data center is required. Uh, you can find many definitions on the web explaining what a data center is. The one on this slide is the definition given by Gardner. The data center is supported by a physical facility, uh, the actual building structure, and the utility infrastructure, such as power, cooling, water, fire suppression systems, etc. The data center can be self-owned, we call them enterprise data centers, or the data center functionality can be outsourced to a third party like a co-location provider or a commercial data center. Module three is about data center standards. Here we will explain the differences between standards, guidelines and white papers. We will point out some of the properties of the TIA 942 standard and the importance of compliance to national standards. Various documentation is available on the internet that can be used when designing a data center. Some of these are real standards, but others are guidelines or white papers with a commercial intent. Most data centers follow either the TIA 942 standard, which is an official accredited data center standard, or the Uptime Institute guidelines. Here we have a high level overview defining the various levels of data center availability as it is described in the rating levels of the TIA 942 standard. In the training, we will go, of course, more into detail explaining the differences between those four rating levels. Module 4 covers site selection. In other words, what is required to select the right location for your data center facilities. We will point out in this module the various aspects related to site selection, Amongst others, we will cover compliance to regulations, potential risks, as well as the presence of the utility infrastructure. Apart from the technical and financial aspects in this module, we will also indicate the importance of site selection and the various roles within the selection process. We will explain the importance of the various site selection criteria that needs to be discussed in order to select the right location for your future data center. Module five is about the data center facilities areas. Here we will give insight in the importance of separating the various facility areas in this module, we will also explain the function and high level requirements for every data center room or area. This slide explains the need for separating the various facility areas. The main reason is to increase the availability of the data center facilities as well as reducing any cascading risks. This is an example uh, giving the functionality and the high level requirements for the computer room or server room. One of the larger modules in this course is about the power infrastructure. In module six, we are explaining the mains and backup power infrastructure of the data center. You do not have to worry that you need to be an electrical engineer to comprehend this module. We are 
explaining everything as clearly as possible so that you can understand everything from this module, even without having a technical background. Here is the principle of a generator explained, including the working of its main components. Different types of uninterruptible power supply systems are reviewed in the DCFC. Uh, we are not only explaining their purpose, but also explain how they work and what are the most common UPS parallel configurations. As mentioned before, this module covers the complete power supply and power distribution in the data center. So all the way up from mains power supply until the power distribution within the equipment racks. This slide gives you an example of the different types of power rails or power strips that can be installed in the equipment racks. Module 7 is about lighting. In this module, we will give you insight on the different lighting standards, the required light levels, emergency light standards, and the different types of emergency light. Here, some of the lighting standards are mentioned where the TIA 942 is preferred to be used in a data center environment. Obviously, you need to comply at least to the local standards and regulations. In this slide, we explain the different units of light measurement and the recommended light levels in the data center. The cooling infrastructure module is another large module. In this module eight, we are explaining the need for cooling in our data centers. We will explain the operating principles of various types of cooling systems like refrigerant-based cooling and water-based cooling. Cooling in both race floor and non-race floor environments will be addressed. We will also point out some options for supplemental cooling and explain the differences between hot and cold aisle containment. In the DCFC training, we will point out the different components that you can find in air conditioning systems. And we are explaining the basics on how air conditioning systems work. Uh, this is, for instance, an example uh, of a refrigerant-based cooling system. As mentioned in the objectives of this module, we are going into the principle of cold oil containment as well as its advantages and disadvantages. As you can see on the slide, this is about cold oil containment and of course we are doing the same for hot oil containment. Module 9 covers the ICT and network infrastructure. Here we will give examples on what types of equipment racks are available and how to use the right type or select the right type for your applications. Also, different network cabling solutions will be explained, including the importance of proper cable management and labeling. Various equipment rack specifications will be given in this training as there are the rack size, rack color, and rack security. Best practices for rack placement in the computer room are also covered. The purpose of using cable trace is explained in this module. For clarification, we are showing in the actual training several photos of the different cable support systems. Of course, security is part of the DCFC training. In module 10, we will address parameter security, physical security, CCTV systems, logical security, and the security of equipment and applications. In addition to this, data center access systems will be also explained. Here is one of the slides that explains parameter 
security in the training we will give some examples of the different types of measures that you can take to implement or improve the parameter security of your data center for access control various technologies will be presented like batch systems and the use of biometrics this is one of the slides covering the batch system the procedural aspects will also be covered in this module like policies for restricted areas key management procedures etc module 11 is about fire safety we will point out the main causes of a fire in a data center. We are describing various fire detection, suppression and prevention systems. The required policies and procedures to enhance fire safety in the data center will also be part of this module. Here is an example of what the potential consequences are caused by a fire in the data center. Most data center fires are actually related to electrical issues where the most common sources are equipment overheating and overloading of the electrical distribution system. The importance of proper fire protection in data centers is often underestimated. In this module, we will explain the operation of the various fire suppression systems like water-based systems gas-based systems as well as handheld fire extinguishers this slide shows you the operation of a chemical gas-based fire suppression system the operation of a chemical gas-based fire suppression system continues on this slide in this training we will also give you guidance on how to choose the right gas-based fire suppression system for your data center the last module of DCFC is about monitoring and reporting in module 12 we will explain the goal and objectives of monitoring and reporting we will address the requirements for monitoring including notification and escalation various monitoring systems will be highlighted like DCIM uh, that stands for data center infrastructure management systems building management systems but also network management systems as this slide shows we are starting this module describing the goal and objectives of monitoring and reporting as mentioned earlier uh, we will also describe in this module various monitoring solutions like the environmental monitoring system, the building management system and the network management system. Uh, one of the slides addressing the building management system is actually shown here. This ends the sneak peek of our DCFC training. Further details on this training can be found on our company's website eh, using the URL given on this slide at eh, www.epi-ap.com slash DCFC. I hope you have enjoyed this sneak peek of the Data Center Foundation Certification course. I would like to thank you for your attention and we are looking forward to see you at the DCFC training. Uh, to contact us, you can use the email address mentioned on the slide, eh? sales at epi-ap.com. You can also follow us on the social media. Uh, multiple social media contacts are listed on this slide. Again, thank you very much and I hope sincerely that you enjoyed this sneak peek.